The Profit First book makes a huge claim, and that's that it's going to change the way that you think about and operate your finances inside your business, but also help you make and save even more profit sooner in your business life cycle. So what is this Profit First system? How does it work? And is it this awesome financial revelation or is it just a hack? Let's find out. Get it. As we do a deep dive into this book, I'm going to break this video down into five main parts and you can see what all those parts are and what's covered inside them on screen right now. But please do make sure that you stick around until the very end, because that's when I give my final verdict and whether or not I actually recommend this book, as well as if I do recommend it, what things that you should be keeping in mind when you're actually reading it, as well as potentially implementing it. So let's not waste any more time. Let's get on to part one, which is what is this Profit First system and why and how does it claim to be different? So the fundamental concept of Profit First is really quite simple. Yet it is quite radical in the way that it approaches looking at finances within a business based on traditional accounting, because traditionally people have always said sales minus expenses equals profits. You've got revenue from your sales. You pay what you owe as your expenses and whatever is left over, you take home. And Profit First flips that completely on its head and it says, actually, let's switch these around. And now it's sales minus profits equals expenses. And the idea behind that is that whenever you have your revenue, you take out your money first and then whatever is left over, you have as expenses to spend inside your business. And when you actually start to break down the book, it's really a book about budgeting cleverly disguised as an accounting hack. How do you do, fellow kids? Because when you start breaking down the chapters and what is actually said in the book, it really starts splitting things into budgets and pockets of money where you're putting them aside to really budget for what you're going to spend on operations. What are you going to spend on your profit? What are you going to spend on this? And the idea behind it in terms of what Mike Michalowicz actually says is that he says, well, if you put one big pocket and you say, I've got this to spend on my expenses because sales minus expenses and then whatever is left over, I take home. He argues that usually that all gets spent because based on Parkinson's law, if you are going to have a 14 day project and you give yourself 14 days, you're going to take 14 days to do it. But if you say, actually, we've only got seven seven days to do this 14 day project in and you will get it done in seven days. So he basically argues that if you give yourself a thousand dollars as an example for expenses, you're going to spend it all. But if you take out a chunk of that money first and you say, actually, from those thousand dollars of sales, I'm going to take out two hundred dollars for me as profit and then eight hundred dollars are left you're going to find a way to make do with the $800. And it's almost like saying, eat your vegetables first. So that's the idea behind how Profit First system works. If you're going to go about implementing the Profit First system, Mike Michalowicz actually recommends you do this over five different steps. Something that you do only once as a one-time setup, then you do something daily, and then there's something that you do twice a month, and then there's something you do quarterly, and then there's another thing that you do on a yearly basis. Let's actually break these down in a little bit more detail, starting with the one time setup. So the one time setup is really about you having multiple different accounts in your bank. And Mike Michalowicz recommends having at least five different accounts spread up over two different banks. One bank where you've got three accounts, where you've got your incoming account in terms of where you make all your sales and all the money comes in. A second one as owner's pay, which is where you pay yourself as a salary. And then the third one is about your operating expenses. And then on the second bank, you've got two other accounts. One of them is for profit. And the second one is for paying any taxes that you have. So that's what you do. There are other accounts that you can recommend as you become more advanced. But essentially, this is the bare minimum so that you can get started on the Profit First system. One other thing that Mike Michalowicz actually recommends when you're doing your one time setup is having something called your target allocation percentages. And that's essentially putting a target down for what percentages that you're going to have in each of these pockets or each of these accounts or each of these budgets. He basically says, right, here's a table and you can go through an instant assessment. And in there it will say, right, so you will need to put X percent for your owner's pay, X percent for your expenses, X percent for profit. But one of the things that trips up a lot of people is that you don't jump to that percentage straight away. So what you do is you also see what your current allocation percentage is and working from there. Let's say in the operating expenses, you work out that your target allocation percentage should be 20 percent, but actually it's currently 60 percent. You don't just suddenly jump and cut your expenses budget from 60 percent to 20 percent. You're going to struggle. So what he suggests to do is then moving downwards 
very, very slowly and changing it once a quarter. So when you first start, for example, then you can start saying, right, instead of 60, it's going to be 59% or 58%, something that's reasonable that you can do. And then every quarter you keep moving that down until you get to the 20% over a period of time. And if it's higher, so if your target is actually higher than what you need to do, then you work your way up and you actually say, right, instead of 10%, it's 11% and 12% until I get to 20% or 30%. With the daily check-in, it's really quite simple and it only takes you a minute and it literally is a check-in. And what Mike Michalowicz actually recommends is that you have a look at your bank number one, where you've got your income, where you've got your operating expenses, as well as your owner pay. Don't bother about sort of bank two now where your profit and taxes are. It's just literally having a check-in on your main accounts. So that's it. It takes a minute and it just keeps you on top of your finances and it gets you psychologically in that mindset of being able to say, right, okay, I'm working on my finances on a daily basis. Twice a month, Mike Michalowicz recommends on the 10th and the 25th of every month. This is when you transfer money from your income account into all of the other pots and budget accounts that you've put aside. So money into your owner's pay, money into your operating expenses, and also transfer to bank number two for your profits and taxes. He also recommends that this is when you kind of sit down and pay any bills you have from your operating expenses uh, account, not from your income account, from your operating expenses account. And also if you need to pay salaries or if you need to pay yourself from the owner's pay. So what comes out of the owner's pay is salary for you as the owner of the business, but anything else in terms of salaries and bills comes out of the operating expenses. There are advances later on in the chapter where he says, if you want to get more advanced, you could have even separate accounts for employee salaries and things like that. But for now, let's keep it simple in terms of those basic accounts that he says are the bare minimum. Every quarter, the book suggests that you take out 50% of what's in your profit account and you distribute profit share. You also use a tax account to pay any tax liabilities that you may have. Annually, what he suggests is reviewing and having sort of end of year accounts with your accountant and making sure that everything's working properly, as well as potentially moving money into a vault in terms of retirement, in terms of savings, investments, other things. This is how you're going to build your wealth. So that's kind of how the profit first system works. Now let's have a look in terms of what I find to be its strengths and potentially its weaknesses. By the way, just a quick sort of me interjecting here before I let me again carry on is if you are finding value out of this video, please hit that like button and also the subscribe button if you can, because it really does make a difference to the channel and it helps YouTube show it to more people and it helps us know that we are giving you the right message and the right value. So please, it doesn't cost you anything. It won't take you any time. Just click on the like button. Thank you. And back to our regular program. When I first read this book, I thought, wow, that's very clever because there are not very many good financial books, but more importantly, it was engaging and it was conversational and it was entertaining. And actually I listened to the audible version as well. And it's narrated by Mike Michalowicz himself. And he's a great narrator. So when he actually, he's almost as if he's speaking to you and with you. And he's got great stories and examples and things like that. And it's a really, really engaging book. And it actually makes an incredibly boring subject, potentially to a lot of people, approachable and actually engaging and interesting so that you can then start saying, right, let me do this today. And you can start noticing differences in your business from day one. The arguments that he does make are quite fair in terms of that if you have only got a certain amount of money that you allocate to a certain pot, you're going to try and get innovative and you're going to try and find ways to cut your expenses. You're going to try and find ways to do things in shorter times and, and it's going to really keep you lean and enable you to grow in a lean stage where you're not just sort of overspending and expenses are going everywhere. It will help you take money out of the of the business first early on. If you're actually structuring it in a way where you can pay yourself from a profit perspective and you do have profit at the end of the year, then that's actually much better. It is a way of really understanding and making you crystal clear on having a routine and a structure where you're saying to yourself, okay, I need to do this on the 10th day, on the 25th day of the month. I've got these accounts. These are my percentages. These are my budgets. And it really does break things down in a way which can change the way if you are not good at finances and if you're not good at somebody who understands how to grow wealth in the business and really grow a company without running out of money, 80% of businesses run out of cash 
And that's how they failed. So if you are potentially in one of those areas where you are worried that you cannot maintain control over your finances, then it is a great book. However, let's now speak about the things where it can be challenging and it doesn't always work. From a negative perspective, when I first read the book, it kind of hit me in a way, and I heard this from more than one person, where it's almost like condescending. It's like, I don't trust you, so I'm going to tell you what to do. If I leave you to your own devices, you're just going to ruin the business. You know, you need to hide money away and put it into places where you cannot see it, and you put it into a second bank account because I don't trust you to be able to look after your money and manage your money properly. Apologies. Apologies, it's actually a good book. But from my perspective is once you begin to understand and you want to have that mindset of being the CEO of your business and you want to start moving your money in a way where you could build wealth faster and in a much more efficient and optimized way, there are a lot of things that are left to be desired here for this book. And a couple of things just simply don't work. And actually, Mike Michalowicz, towards the end of the book, actually tries to give a defense to a lot of criticism that I think he might have got. But I actually kind of agree with that criticism is that it doesn't help you grow fast because it's immediately taking you and forcing you to put money in different pockets where you're taking money out of the business early on in bigger chunks. Because actually, the percentage of owner's pay at the beginning is almost 50%. Yes, you will enable you to survive better, but it will potentially stall and slow the growth of the business. And his argument is that that's rubbish because a lot of people sort of grow their businesses like Twitter, where they end up having no revenue, but and they have tons of expenses and they just want to sit there and grow value. And that's not what running a business is about. But in some cases it is. In some cases, WhatsApp actually sold its company for $19 billion and it hadn't made a single dime of revenue. So it's not always about what you have incoming. It's about how you're building the business and the value behind the business and the IP behind your business. And if you are thinking about how do I grow this business in a way that doesn't follow that structure, then you're going to struggle. And it really does sometimes stifle growth because there are ways that you can be creative about how you find money and how you look at cash flow and where do you actually negotiate certain sort of credit contracts and where you move your money around. We talk about this in, in the Firestarter program at, at length. And I actually do at one point talk about the Profit First book because I think fundamentally at its core, it's actually very, very good, but it needs some tweaks and it needs some understanding as the CEO of our businesses, as the entrepreneurs, where we look at the business and we say, this is what we want to achieve with our business. And this is our strategy. And I need a financial system that's going to fit within this overall strategy, not something that I bolt on as a Frankenstein piece where I say, right, that's going to be an accounting system that's going to work because it works for the majority of people. That's not how I necessarily want to grow my business. So that's kind of where I begin to feel that it falls and it fails and it falls a bit flat because it doesn't give you that flexibility. One last thing that I think also potentially has an incredible challenge is sometimes businesses don't generate revenue consistently. Sometimes businesses run launches that are just once a year and they just launch a, a potential course or a training program once a year and their money just comes in in May or January or February. And maybe you're working up to the entire end of the year before you've generated any income whatsoever and you're not getting any a lot of revenue and you are supposed to work from a perspective of what I'm getting January, February, March, April, May, June, July, until I actually make money in September. And then that doesn't actually allow you to advertise, to market, to hire the right people and being able to maneuver the money around where you're waiting until money that comes into September that then gets split up into this. And then I take out a big chunk of profit from that. But when I take out a big chunk of profit from that, then the rest of the year until the next year, I potentially might run out of cash flow issues again. So there are issues there with the book. And, and when you begin to actually look at the book, I want you to start looking at it from that perspective. As a basic system, it's awesome. And this brings me to the verdict of what I think about the book. I do recommend the book. I think it's really important to read. And I think it's a book that is has a lot of good things to say about budgeting, about really beginning to understand how you cut your expenses and how you start moving money around and how to start getting disciplined about the finances within your business, which is a big part of running your business. You as the CEO of the business needs to make sure that you maintain enough cash flow in the bank. So being able to do that while surviving at home as well and being able to feed yourself and put money on the table, it's a very, very good book with the caveats of what I've just explained in the section before this, which is actually if you want to do certain things in a slightly different way, you need to sort of understand that this needs to feed in and fit in with your overall strategy and what your business model actually is. So when you've got these particular types of businesses, it's going to change and you're going to have to adapt the system 
so that it suits you and not just follow it blindly. Because if you do follow it blindly in certain circumstances, it won't work. But for the majority of traditional businesses, I think it's a fantastic starting point. And I think it's a fantastic way to really enable you to manage your business. Now, do you need to go and set up a whole bunch of accounts? That depends on you. If you don't trust yourself, you should be the one that makes that decision, not the book. But if you do trust yourself, or if you've got someone who's actually operating your bookkeeping and your finances and whatever, you can have budgets within the same account and, and, they, and ensure that money is only being spent on budget per quarter, per whatever. Yes, it works. And yes, it's great. And yes, go read the book. Try and implement a lot of what it says because it is very, very useful. And it will, even for the larger companies, when you're beginning to talk about looking at taking profit out first, potentially for shareholders, it's an exercise of budgeting and understanding how to be innovative on cutting expenses. So from that perspective, it's very good. Just make sure that you don't follow blindly and you really understand where its strengths are and where its weaknesses are. If you have any books you want me to do a deep dive on, put them in the comments below and I will put them on the list so that I can cover them. We're doing hopefully one book a month uh, as a deep dive as part of this channel. So if you haven't subscribed yet, please do subscribe. I'll see you next time.